Let's jump right into the chart of Bitcoin. Look at how Bitcoin's struggling at this key level here. So we knew this level was a pivot point right here. We got above it here, never confirmed, then got back below. That maintains the negative bias. Here we are kind of right underneath or on this level. Bitcoin Zella stands out with its simplicity and clarity. We've crafted an experience that anyone can dive into, whether you're a crypto expert or just a new to the crypto world. Now guess who keeps his eye on us? The author of best-selling book Rich Dad Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki. And we want to take this opportunity and thank all the people who trusted us and we read every comment, and the best part, it's free. Subscribing now means you will get all new information for free. Don't just follow the trends, stay ahead of them. Subscribe to Bitcoin Zella today and enjoy the new edge. Let's join Gareth in this video about Bitcoin and more. If the markets, if the equity markets can stay continuing up, eventually you got to think the risk on factor can push Bitcoin to the upside here. But right now it isn't. It is holding steady. In fact, you know, you'd really want to see, considering the rally in the stock market over the last few trading days, you really want to see Bitcoin making a move to the upside. So I would say this needs to start sooner than later. Otherwise, I would be fearful that at some point we're going to see um, this, a sell-off in the equity markets, which could then push Bitcoin to the downside. So again, in other words, there's a stop clock or a stopwatch on this. Tick, tick, tick. It's got to make a move here today or tomorrow, I would say. If not, watch out below. It could be headed back down. Right now, that's where the angling is favoring. But again, I'm kind of rooting for it to close above this high and confirm so that we can get a move up. I still hold some altcoins, although we've taken a lot of profits over the last week or so on our altcoins in smart money crypto, but still holding some looking for a little additional move. Speaking of one of the ones that I'm still holding here, uh, we can see very clearly on the chart here we have this area of support, which is now actually resistance right up in this range. So we can see again that this again now should actually be saying resistance since we broke below it. In fact, I'll punch that in resistance right here. Uh, what I want to do is just take away here. That's really around the 2800 level, this level right here. So that's your resistance line. If we can get through that, we should make a run at 3,000. But 3,000 is going to be huge resistance. Look at these two trend lines converging right here. So again, even if you get through 2,800, Ethereum is going to struggle likely at 3,000. Nearly half of Bitcoin supply has remained inactive for six months, with long-term holders, LTAs, showing strong commitment despite market volatility, according to Glassnode's latest data. On-chain data confirms that 45% of Bitcoin supply has not been moved in half a year. Many LTAs held their coins through both the all-time high and subsequent volatility, preferring not to sell. Recent trends show fewer LTH sell-offs, with their holdings growing once again after stabilizing. Despite recent sell-offs and fears of further price drops, LTAs remain confident in holding Bitcoin. Some believe rising global liquidity could positively impact Bitcoin's future. Next up, gold today, not doing a whole lot. I was hoping that gold would get a final push up here to that 3,000, uh, 2,500, I should say, on, on gold. It's not happening on the back of the CPI data. Uh, we'll see where it is later today, but I would still remain bullish considering how close it is until we hit that 2,500 level. If we look at silver, silver chopping, this is intraday chop, as you can see. And really, if you can see this, I mean, silver, almost no movement on the CPI data, right? This is where the CPI data came out, little pop, little drop, and it's essentially unchanged. And if we go to the charts, we're right on this level. Can silver get above and push up and maybe break out here to the upside? Remember, folks, a close above is good. It puts it in a neutral bias, but it has to confirm above to go bullish. And again, I stress that. That's what I teach in the Winning Trader series. And it literally has saved me from getting fooled on so many, so many um, times where it looks like a breakout and, and then it fails, uh, or it looks like a breakdown and then it reverses back to the upside. All right, looking at oil today, oil down uh, basically flat on the day. You can see yesterday was a nice pullback day. There's nothing here on the chart. Sometimes charts don't give you a good signal. To me, I don't have a good signal. Great bounce. It's kind of in between the resistance up here, the support down here. Is it making a bull flag? We don't know yet. It's too preliminary. So sometimes you just have to say, hey, there's no strong bias one way or the other, and that's okay. Most charts, honestly, are not going to be good at good levels when you bring them up. It's maybe one or two out of every hundred that you look at where you'll say, 
Eureka, this is a great trading opportunity. In terms of oil, no idea here. Is it going to push up? Is it going to push down? But what I do have is a game plan. And the game plan is if it pushes up here, I short it. If it pulls back here, I'll determine if I want to go long at that level. Um, ultimately, my bias over the longer term remains to the negative side. All right, let's look at natural gas real quick as well. See what we got on this one. And again, got to bring up the natural gas chart. There we go. Natural gas making another attempt to the upside here today. Two days in a row, it's pierced this line and failed. Is three days the charm? Is the third time the charm here? We'll find out later today when I do trading the close. I'll cover this. But ultimately, again, this is still a lot of resistance. There was a reason why I sold on the pierce of this a few days ago on the UNG position with Smart Money Commodities members. And now we're just kind of waiting to see. Is this a bull flag? Does it pull back? Is there another opportunity here or does it break through? Go up to the midpoint. And again, just to be clear, where would your heavy resistance be if it does break out? Your midpoint right up here of the M pattern. So you have your M and then this would be the A if it gets up to that level. And remember, this is another chart where there's no good indicator. It could pull back, it could drop like this, or it could break up here. If you don't have a good indicator one way or the other, meaning high probability, you just stay out of it. You just sit back and say, okay, I'll just wait and see. When something good forms on the charts, I will take advantage of that. But until then, handcuff me because I don't want to be doing anything stupid. Uh, we all do it. We all kind of jump the gun sometimes, even when there's not a chart. I just tend to do it less because probably because I've been burned so much in my early career that I forced myself to be more disciplined. But again, that's something that every trader and investor goes through. You go through that undisciplined period. You finally, hopefully, learn that the money being taken from you is not worth being the undisciplined. And finally, you institute the rules, the chart analysis, the education that lets you actually make high probability decisions in the market. The FBI has responded to a FOAA request regarding the identity of Bitcoin's creator, Satoshi Nakamoto, stating they cannot confirm or deny any information about Nakamoto's existence. The FBI's statement claims Satoshi Nakamoto could be a group, but provides no confirmation or new details. Troy seeks more information from the FBI, although identifying Satoshi isn't his primary goal. Theories and candidates, like Hal Finney, persist, but no definitive proof has emerged. With BlackRock leading the charge, Satoshi's estimated 1.1 million Bitcoin may be surpassed by US ETF. Unfounded claims link Satoshi to agencies like the CIA, fueling further speculation. SPI Digital Community Colud has partnered with Ripple Labs, Incorporated, to promote the use of the XRP ledger in the Web3 space. The partnership will also involve issuing non-fungible tokens, NFTs, on the XRP ledger and rewarding creators in XRP, aiming to enhance consumer experiences and make Web3 technologies more accessible. Despite Western restrictions imposed after Russia invaded Ukraine, billions of dollars and euros in banknotes have flowed into the country. This suggests that Russia has found ways to circumvent these restrictions, despite official efforts to reduce reliance on foreign currency. Russian citizens still prefer dollars and euros. If you've been with us so far, a big thank you. Don't forget to subscribe for free to Bitcoin Zella for your daily news. The link is waiting below. That's all for today's crypto news. Stick around for more updates, insights, and analysis on cryptocurrencies. Share your thoughts in the comments, like this video, and subscribe for more exciting content.